This is their largest spawn to date. Pull my hand around the aquarium. And to also try different species of fish. G'day guys, Jason here. Welcome back to my fish room. So in this week's video, we're gonna be doing my April 2021 fish room update tour. So let's just get straight into it. So the first tank getting an update this month is this one, and it is my Gelidochromus regani tank. In last week's video, we ended up on a bit of a cliffhanger, and I didn't really show you what happened to the fry I was catching out of the tank. They were about four to five months old. Some of them were really over an inch long, and I removed them and put them into a grow out tank. And I had to do that because the parents in this tank were getting extremely aggressive towards those guys. And that's because they had a very large brood. They had a huge spawn. This is their largest spawn to date. If you've been a subscriber on my channel for a while now, you would know that these guys have been regularly producing about 20 fry per spawn. Uh, but this is by far their largest and I'm expecting at least 80 fry in this spawn. It is huge. Uh, there is a cloud of fry that swarm around the parents. The Regani in this tank are a little bit skittish at the moment. They are acting a bit shy because the camera is right in front of the aquarium and they're not used to seeing that object. So they're being a little bit cautious with their fry at the moment. So because over the last few months, each spawn from these guys has been about 20 fry, I've just grown accustomed to that and figured that this is all it was gonna be from these guys, that they would just regularly produce 20 fry for me at a time and that they will never spawn and have large amounts of fry in one go. But this has blown that uh, expectation out of the water. So I'm really pleased about that. And it's just awesome to see a cloud of fry envelop their parents while they're eating their fry food. So the interesting thing at the moment that I'm noticing with these fry is that when I turn the light on first thing in the morning, that all the fry are sitting on the sand bed. They're not actually in the rock structure with their parents. Would have thought that they would be hugging the rock structure, be close to their parents for protection. But that's not the case in this aquarium. It might be just that because they know there are no other fish in this aquarium, they feel a little bit safer and uh, can afford to let their guard down a little bit more than in an aquarium where there are other fish that could prey on the, on the fry. However, I'm not sure about that. However, as they get used to the light being on for a few minutes, they move closer and closer to the rock structure and then hug their parents' territory and they don't stray too far away from it while the light is on. So that's something I've observed with these guys with this spawn. I've never noticed it with any other spawns. Possibly I haven't noticed it with other spawns because this spawn is such a large spawn. These guys are about well, two weeks old. Two weeks free swimming. Yeah, I'm really keen to see how many there are because as I said, I'm estimating at least 80. There could possibly be more. It's extremely difficult to count them. Uh, it's pretty much impossible. But now I'm really excited about this breeding pair because I guess I can expect more often than not their spawn sizes to be at least this size or possibly even larger moving forward. And while we're on the topic of Regani, this is my four foot by two foot wide by two foot high tank. And it is one of the only aquariums I have in the fish room that is a Tanganyikan community tank that also has species of Malawi cichlid in it, my Kawanga Golds. So in this tank, you can probably see on camera, there is a pair of Regani near that rock structure in the middle there. And there are several generations of fry in this aquarium, along with very, very large cichlids. You can see there's a Ventralis male there. Now I do intend to remove this breeding pair of Regani out of this tank and put them in their own aquarium, but they've done a fantastic job at protecting and rearing their fry in this tank with all the larger cichlids I have in this aquarium. I really do like watching this tank because seeing all the different sizes of fish co-inhabit this one aquarium, I mean, I've got some very large cichlids in here compared to the size of the Regani fry and to see them not really pick off those Regani fry is quite interesting. Uh, I almost feel like they think that the fry are their own and that's why they don't get uh, preyed upon. If you've got a larger tank with not too many aggressive fish in it, you could possibly do something like this and breed and raise your fry in a large aquarium with other, other large cichlids. However, you would have a much greater success rate at breeding your cichlids in their own species specific aquarium. But it is kind of interesting to watch the behavior of all these fish co-inhabit. Seeing the Regani fry, especially all the different sizes and different ages, uh, hug that rock work with their parents and watching how the parents defend their fry from the other cichlids in this aquarium is very, very interesting. And yeah, I just enjoy watching the interactions between all the fish in this aquarium. Now apologies for the different quality and footage on these next to cranes, but they are just very difficult for me to film because it's so high up off the fish room floor. But I thought I'd give you an update on these guys, which are my Lampalogus Ocelotus Gold, these fry. Pretty cool looking. See how they're all school and 
swim around together. We've got probably well over 100 in this aquarium and they're doing really, really well already, showing their gold coloration. So, let's see them follow my hand around. The aquarium, quite tame, awesome to see. And they are constantly feeding, they just don't stop, which is great to see as well. These guys are slow growers, so uh, keeping them uh, nice and fed up on food, baby brine shrimp, live microworms, and some high quality pellets. So I'm just trying to avoid all the reflections from the other aquariums behind these tanks. So you can see these guys better. But how cool do they look all swimming around like this? There's two batches of fry in this aquarium from two different females, hence why there's so many fry in here. And you can see they're doing really well and not preying up on each other, even though there are at least two generations of fry in this tank. However, they were born very close to each other, um, but they're only born about two to three weeks apart, so that's why they look very, very similar size, and that I'm able to put these guys together like this. If they were born so close together, there's no way in hell you'd be able to do this. So this tank is quite interesting to watch because there's just so many baby oscillatus gold in it. So the next tank getting an update is my Neolampologus Lelupi Longueur tank. You can see all the fry in here with the parents. Now, because this tank is so dark, I've got black walls, there's black paint on the walls and on the background and even the bottom. When they dig all the way to the bottom, there's this black neoprene layer instead of styrofoam, so there's black on all sides basically. Because of that, the Leilupi darken up. So if you're going to keep Leilupi in your aquariums, make sure you keep them in a nice bright tank, not a dark tank, because they will try to blend in their surroundings. And I'm not too concerned about that, because these guys aren't going to stay in here for much longer. See the size of the fry, and that there are different generations of fry in this aquarium. I don't think they're going to breed anymore in here because this tank is pretty much full of fish now. So I'm going to be moving these parents out of this tank in the coming days purely because they've split up again. The male is fighting with the female again and I just believe that they're just, the tank is just too small for this many fish and these guys in here. So they're going to be going into their own aquarium in the racks behind me and they'll be going into the Neolamprologus brevis sunspot tank because those guys are getting sold on. Also, as you can see, the cyanobacteria has come back with a vengeance and the slate is covered in the horrible stuff. So I've got a lot of cleaning to do on these tanks. Just haven't had a lot of time lately, but it will get all done. Those fry will go into their own breeding tanks and the Leilupa will go into their own tank and hopefully the pair will form their bond again. So normally when you walk into the fish room, these tanks up here are full of fish. And as you can see, the first three tanks are pretty much empty. All that is in these aquariums now are bristlenose catfish to help me clean the glass. You can even see that there are no uh, internal sponge filters anymore. I have pulled them out. And the reason I've done that is because I've sold every single fish in these aquariums. Lamprologus oscillatus gold and Neolamprologus brevis sunspot. They were all sold two weeks ago, so I'm really pleased about that because it's freed up some aquariums for me for further fry grow out. The other thing is, this tank is empty as well. This is the tank I had the Jitterdochromus regarding fry in last week. It's the tank I moved them into. You saw last week's video. They also got sold. So I'm really pleased now that I have some tanks freed up for more fry grow out because I was running out of room. You can see the fry that I have here. We got some Brevis Sunspot here. Some of the older fry that I've got left over. Lamprologus oscillatus gold tank that I just showed you and some older Lamprologus oscillatus gold fry. These guys aren't at a sellable size yet, so that's why they're still in the fish room. But yeah, it's, this has enabled me to grow out some more fry and to also try different species of fish. And having all those spare tanks is really important to me at the moment because I've got a lot of Leilupi fry, as you can see, that need to go into their own grow out tanks. And while we're talking about Leilupi, this breeding pair, they spawned, you would have seen, I showed you heaps of fry on the bottom of the aquarium. And then I suspect that that male you see right there, beautiful looking fish. Unfortunately, he ate all the fry. The pair, their bond is still strong though. And I do think that they're gonna breed again soon. And I might just have to catch all the fry or move the pair out into another tank for those fry to survive. Or just let them be and hopefully he's Parental instincts will kick in and he won't harm his fry after a few spawns. But yeah, unfortunately, all the fry I had in this aquarium with this pair 
have all been eaten by that male. So there you have it guys, my April 2021 fish room update tour. I really hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, please hit the thumbs up, comment and subscribe buttons. I really would appreciate it. All right guys, I'm gonna wrap this video up now. Thanks heaps for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.